Hi everyone, my name's Chris and today I'm taking a look at Samyang's popular 85mm f1.4 lens, compatible with full frame and APS-C cameras. 85mm lenses with an aperture as wide as f1.4 can get stunning pictures and typically they cost at least around 600 to even a thousand pounds. But the Samyang lens is astonishingly good value for money, being only about 250 pounds or around 350 US dollars. Although it's a manual focus lens, still it's pretty sweet to get such a bright full frame lens for that price and as a result, a lot of people have been fixing to get hold of it. Look at all that beautiful glass. Now 85mm on a full frame camera is a short telephoto focal length. It can give you a good emphasis on your subject without compressing your backgrounds into complete oblivion. It's the minimum focal length you'll want for conventional portrait photography. 85mm can be quite nice for landscape photography too, if you want to emphasize a particular scene. If you're using this lens on an APS-C camera though, then it gives about a 135mm focal length. That's getting pretty tight, so on an APS-C camera, the lens will be even better for portrait work and also very good for event photography, but not so great for everyday, general purpose use. The obvious selling point is this lens's extremely wide maximum aperture of f1.4. It can let in a huge amount of light, which makes it great for shooting indoors or in dark situations. More importantly to most people though, is that an aperture as wide as f1.4 will give you a very narrow depth of field. Your backgrounds will be very out of focus indeed, and you'll be able to pinpoint your subject in focus quite easily. 85mm is the longest focal length you can get with an aperture as fast as f1.4. It yields supreme background separation for those who want it. You'll have to focus carefully though. Remember, this is a fully manual lens, so you have to change the aperture and the focus yourself. If you use live view mode on your camera, then it's easy enough with a bit of practice. Let's look at its build quality. You'd think that an inexpensive lens like this would have shoddy build quality, but this Samyang lens is actually built very solidly, based around a metal lens mount and with a lot of metal in its construction. Although it is weighty and solid, it isn't too big, balancing nicely on your camera. The lens's focus ring turns very smoothly and is well damped. It has quite a long travel path for precise focusing, which is just as well for a manual focus lens. Filmmakers will be delighted with that. It's a pleasure to focus during video work. The lens's front element does not turn or extend as you change focus, which is useful for people who use polarizing or graduating filters. Below the focus ring is the aperture ring. You also have to set the lens's aperture manually. It starts at f1.4, then clicks down to f2, and clicks again every half stop to f16, and one final click takes you to f22. The lens comes with front and rear lens caps, a hood, and a padded bag. Overall, for the money you pay, it's a rather nice package. But the most important thing is image quality. Is it sharp? Let's put it through my optical testing torture grounds. Firstly, we'll see how it performs on a full frame camera, a 20 megapixel Canon 6D. At f1.4, yes, the lens is very sharp in the middle of the image. That's all that really matters for portrait photographers. Colors seem to be neutral and contrast levels are quite good. Let's look in the corners. Image quality is a little soft in the corners, but still quite usable. Also, we're not seeing any chromatic aberration. Stop the aperture down to f2 for more brightness and a little more sharpness in those corners and the middle of the image has seen a nice increase in contrast and resolution, reaching very high levels. At f2.8, the image quality couldn't be sharper in the middle and the corners are improving. At f4, the corners are good and at f5.6, they reach their peak of sharpness. 
So overall, the Samyang 85mm f1.4 lens is a very sharp lens in the middle of its images with good colours and contrast. Its corners are a little soft, but to be honest, 90% of people buying this lens will be doing portrait photography, where your corners will be out of focus anyway. Let's see how it performs on a trickier sensor of an APS-C camera, in this case my 20 megapixel Canon 70D. At f1.4 in the middle of the image, we see some good sharpness mixed with purple fringing. That's quite a common sight for a fast aperture lens on an APS-C camera. Again, like on a full frame camera, the corners are a little soft. At f2 there's a little improvement in the corners and back in the middle we get improved sharpness and removed purple fringing. At f2.8 we get brilliant sharpness in the middle and the corners are also getting sharper. Once we reach f4 or f5.6 the corners become very sharp. So it's a similar story on an APS-C camera. The lens is sharp in the middle, but the corners appreciate a little stopping down. Let's look at distortion and vignetting on a full frame camera. It's quite good news from the Samyang lens. It shows a negligible level of barrel distortion, which is very hard to spot. At f1.4, unsurprisingly, we see some pretty noticeable shading in the corners. However, for an f1.4 lens, that's a little bit less than average really. It could have been a lot worse. Stop down to f2 and we already see quite uniform brightness across the image frame, and at f2.8 you can't spot any vignetting at all. It's a comparatively good performance for such a fast lens, really. The lens's closest focus distance is about 1 meter, so you won't be getting many close-up pictures here. At f1.4, sharpness levels are very good, although you can see just a touch of colour fringing. Stop down to f2 for a cleaner picture, and at f2.8 we see fantastic sharpness levels close up. Let's see how the lens works against bright lights. We get some flaring and a loss of contrast when the sun is in the picture, so be sure to use that free lens hood. And let's finish up with something very important, bokeh. For a portrait lens like this, it's vital to have nice quality backgrounds that don't distract you from the subject of the picture. The Samyang does a very good job here. Out of focus backgrounds are rendered very smoothly, with no ugly distractions. Nice. Overall, I like the Samyang 85mm f1.4 a lot, and so do many other people. It was born for portrait work, where its lovely bokeh and good sharpness in the middle of your images really shine through. But really, this lens has all kinds of other uses. It is also fantastic value for money. If you're ready to try a manual focus lens, then for only £250, this instrument could open up some very professional opportunities for you. At the end of the day, like most other Samyang lenses, the 85mm f1.4 is fantastic value for money, and it comes highly recommended.